I just made my kimbap. Do you see it? Oh, it smells so good. I usually do a gojijang soy curl. So these are butler soy curls um, as my source of protein. And I have burdock root, um, radish, spinach, carrots, and the soy curls. And then some rice and then some nori. And it's so good. Uh, it's super nutritious. And I get all of my different like veggies and nutrients in. And I just love how like cute it is. You know what I mean? Let me show you like a aesthetic one. <laughs> Makeup tutorial. <laughs> but yeah, look at how like cute this looks. <laughs> Yum. Mmm. Today is the day that I'm going to try to pull myself out of this depressive episode um, and it has not started off the way that I had planned. I honestly laid in bed for the past three hours, watched some K-dramas, ate some shrimp crackers, and let's get out of bed. It's never too late. forget about the part of us that never changes, a part deep within us that knows that we are powerful, truthful, purposeful. I want you to imagine that this heavy energy is being poured from the crown of your head down through the entire body. And the truest part within us is that there's something that never changes. What doesn't change within us is our light, our power, our ability to serve and have purpose. I just finished a meditation and a stretching session. I always like to start off my morning with doing my AM skincare, get that sunscreen on because when I wear my sunscreen, even if I'm not going outside, I know it's gonna be a good day. So let's sit over here and chat for a second, shall we? It's been, what, three weeks since I've made a video and I was doing so well. If you've been following my vlogs, you know that I've been on an immense healing journey with my mental illness, my high functioning clinical depression. And if you're new here, hi, I went on antidepressants a few months ago and I was finally feeling on top of it all. And then recently with the Atlanta shootings and the spike in Asian hate crimes and all of the xenophobia and how much it brought up like the racial trauma and I don't know, internalized racism, it was so much to process. And it almost felt like all of the coping mechanisms that had helped me so far just couldn't bear the weight of it all and i fell back into a depressive episode like the first battle of every day is getting out of my bed and then the second battle is trying to stay out of my bed and finding the energy to do the things that i'm passionate about you know which is making content here and um, talking about sustainability and you know educating and sharing and inspiring all of you but when i don't have energy to do that 
and I, I barely have energy to do like the bare minimum of just living. It gets so exhausting and then I fall into the cycle of feeling guilty and all of that. And I think it's so interesting and this is what I wanted to share with you guys is one, I hope that this can document like, I don't know, how we can try to heal ourselves out of a funk or out of a depressive episode if you struggle with depression. Um, and not glamorizing it because even though self-care videos are incredible and you know how they focus on self-care and taking care of ourselves and self-love i think they sometimes can glamorize um having mental illness so i hope that this can be a real like raw video um but yeah it almost felt like everything else just came to a standstill and i'm not really good at that but what I've learned is to just be self-compassionate in those times and listen to your body. And if your body is telling you that you just need to stay in your safe space, which for me is my bed, and to comfort myself with the snacks that bring nostalgia, that's okay. Um, but also knowing that it is a priority to continue to eat nutritious foods and to take care of myself, that's a balance that I've learned. So yeah, that's kind of where I was at. And then now with this weekend, it's been like three weeks, it's April. And I didn't want to stay in that state anymore. I think that's the beauty of the space that antidepressants allow you is it gives you just that little bit of breathing room to, you know, ask yourself, okay, how do I want to show up for me today? because I want to show up for me today. So yeah, I just wanted to share that with you. I know I don't really talk about the mental health side of things as much, but I want to start sharing more of it. And my neighbor's doing something. <laughs> I'm going to try to journal um, some thoughts and see what kind of comes out, what I've been keeping in my head this past week because I have not been able to journal for the past week. Turns out I was really anxious and stressed about um, how I'm turning 26 in like a week and a half. And birthdays are always weird to me because I see my success and my life chapters as by my birthday. So, and this will be my second COVID birthday. So last year, I didn't expect to turn 25 in a pandemic over Zoom calls and it just felt different than how I was expecting to celebrate my quarter century, but it's okay. And I realized how much I've grown in the last year and how many things I've actually accomplished. Even just looking back at like the goals that I set when I turned 25 is so funny because I actually did so many of them, all of them. Um, and I think the biggest thing that I've learned is to ask for what I need and to realize and hold space for like what I want and figuring out like how I actually feel. You control your emotions, you control your mind. And I think that's what ultimately leads us when we're in these spots to pull ourselves out of it. I think that's what's happening right now. So that was really nice to kind of write out. If you've been feeling kind of stuck or unproductive or feeling like, you know, you're not getting to where you want to be, I think journaling or even looking back, if you have been journaling and documenting your thoughts, at like the lists you've made or where you were at even a year ago, even a few months ago and seeing how much you've changed and grown and evolved, even just in how you hold space for yourself and love yourself and prioritize yourself because I think for me like that's been really amazing to remember and remind myself of. I was just editing and I realized that I did film an outro and this is my current mood right now. <laughs> I hope that this video could be relatable and bring some comfort if you've been feeling low or down or sad or in a funk or in a depressive episode yourself. I think it's so important to realize that it's okay not to be okay especially because our bodies aren't built to handle the amount of stress related to living in a pandemic. Ontario just went into lockdown again. And to my Asian community, my Asian woman out there, there is so much happening and it's tough, especially if our mental health is already not in a great position or if you have a mental illness. Sometimes, you know, 
I need a vlog like this too when I'm in this state because it helps me feel like I'm not alone and that like what I'm going through is okay and it's normal. Please leave a like to help this video out in the algorithm and for this raw and real video and comment down below how you've been doing, how things are, where you live and what the little moments of happiness that you're doing for you are. I'd love to know and I'm excited to be back. I'm so proud of myself for even making this video and just sharing where I'm at with you and it didn't feel great to be away for three weeks you know like i said like you are my passion this creating on here is my passion but i realize that it's okay when i don't have energy to <laughs> take a step back for a bit and i'm excited to film more this week but for today it's still the long weekend so i am going to be cocooned and enjoy my last long weekend vacation day before work starts again tomorrow but i hope that you enjoyed and know that i'm here and you're not alone and we're gonna get through this together so i love you appreciate you so much and i'll see you in my next one